Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 9 of my modded Factorio playthrough. On this episode, we're going to finish up with our Saprite smelting and fire it up and see how it works. Enjoy. We need to have a total of 12 furnaces. It would be nice. It's not critical that we sort the furnaces um, between copper and iron. They can just handle both. I think that should work okay. They'll just uh, pick up whatever they can actually manage to pick up. It should work. It might not necessarily be the most efficient, but it'll also be the most square. Because if we don't do it this way, one side will have eight and the other side will have four. And that would be weird. <laughs> Can't have that. Gotta have the same on each side. Speaking of which, it's 12. So this output is going to be copper and iron. And then, let's see. Time for these undergrounds. I don't know where the coal's gonna come from, probably that side. So something like that. are 12. You can see how quickly you run out of resources when building big stuff like this. Okay, finally done with this. So you don't want to go nuts too early. You want to make sure you actually have enough resources to build the things you want to build. Because it could be really annoying to be like, oh, I have this giant project, but it's going to take me hours to actually collect the necessary resources. Okay. Uh, so the ore will input on the top side, and it's just going to select whatever ore it first gets its hands on. So for example, if this guy is doing copper, it's going to keep picking up copper, and eventually it's going to get to the point where it's just iron that makes it down here. And then when it runs out of iron, it'll just pick up, or runs out of copper, it'll start picking up the iron. So it's just gonna, they're gonna process whatever they have, they can get their greedy little inserters on. Oh, and the, uh, should handle the near inserters and all of that. So we can say near with this side, so you can see how it's kind of got that short arrow to show that it's in near mode. Or, you can do the configurator and just say exactly where on the belt you want it to drop it. So you want that one to be near, and those two to be near. And uh, if you're outputting to one belt, usually it's good to alternate between near and not near. Just so you can fully, fully load up a belt without actually having to have machines on both sides. It's just kind of an advantage of Bob's adjustable inserters, so why not use it? Man, this constructing is taking forever now. Okay, and then this other side needs to be a long-handed inserter to bring in the coal. Is this going to be a good place to actually build this thing? 
I don't know if I want to move it. <laughs> uh, I wasn't really thinking about that. Maybe that is going to be where it stays. Because I don't want to pick this up. Okay. So now this output belt is going to have copper and iron on it. Which direction is the belt going to go? I guess it needs to go both sides because the copper or the uh, science is over here. So we can bring this together. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go this way. output and we can say the output on one side is going to be iron and then we know the other side it has to be copper I mean we running low lights. Eh, let's try them right here and see how it looks. Okay. And the number of miners we need. 12. I don't think we're going to be able to afford 12. Uh, nope. So we might not be able to test this thing at full blast for a while. Right, how many miners can we make? Two. This is probably gonna overload overload the circuit or the uh, the power network. Oh well. Guess we'll just have to build more power stations. Okay. Let's see if everything works as intended. We need to pipe in coal. But at least we can see that much. See, go that far, yeah. So far, so good. some coal. See, I'm going to put some boxes right here. That 
way we can just pick up resources when we need them. Speaking of this, let's just put some boxes here. Because I want to do the stone processing somewhere else. Because we'll have multiple of these for each resource, and there's no reason to process the stone all in the same place. So let's get this thing fired up. Also, this we probably don't need anymore. I shouldn't have done that. It's already been crushed, so... Let's just let it all get processed. Alright, how many miners? Twelve. miners we have, the faster it's going to go. Actually, if we need 12, we can just do side by side. Actually, since um, we are likely to have copper overload, I'm just going to let all of the copper come in here, but limit the iron plates. Okay. So if we expand our power production, we should be able to see what this thing is like at full blast. where some of the jank gets set up. Uh, let's see, let's set this up over here. Go the long way around. So I think one of these have to go after every single thing because they can't. Or wait, yeah, they can. There we go. So that's that network. And then there's that one. Alright, full power. Let's 
see, it's not getting enough coal, or enough uh, ore. I could just need to catch up. seems pretty efficient. I mean, it's not necessarily important that every machine's running at 100% all the time, even though it is. <laughs> as long as it's mostly running all the time. Like, 99% is perfectly fine. Although, this is actually 100%. That is a perfect, perfect setup. Perfect ratio. I shouldn't say perfect setup, because there's no such thing. It can always be done better. That is a lot more ore than we had before. Uh, and then there's the problem of this. So we need to like invert it and send it the other way. This is going to be a little messy. But it'll get the job done. <laughs> Messy it is. Maybe when I get bots, I can, uh, move that <laughs> move this so it's on the other side so it looks cleaner but still I mean that's not considering I just put all that stuff in there that doesn't look I mean it's fairly compact for what it is that it shoots stuff both directions two different belts I'll let that one collect all the crap because that's what it's doing already I mean really need to be building the uh the basic components. But automate the science part. Uh, actually, since that's the only thing that's over there, we might not need two full belts of stuff. So we probably can make this a little cleaner. Something like that. I don't think we're going to put anything else over here. It's just, just a... Just a little thing to put over there just since we already have stuff. So how does that look? Green, green, green. And this is basically all green. Looking good. Okay, the only thing that's left here is to handle the stone processing. Which is right here. It's just kind of this little afterthought on the end here, but we need five stone furnaces just to be placed somewhere. And, uh, actually... Uh, I was thinking it could be done in a separate category than this, but whatever, we'll leave it in there for now. So where should stone processing happen? Let's just do it uh, right here, question mark? No, but that's where the bobmonium is. Um, I don't know, like right here. Uh, I'll put it on... I wasn't planning on um, belting these stone bricks anywhere, but I'll just put it on the same side to make it a little more convenient to belt it, if it actually needs to be. Okay. 
and this stone. We already have a bunch of stone. It might take a while for it to catch up. Let's see. Meanwhile, we can get rid of this. Because we have a better way of doing it. I'm not going to rebuild... Um, the glass at this point because we don't really need that much of it so when we run out of glass and we need to make more lamps uh, then we'll worry about it ah I didn't mean to do that too late. <laughs> I don't think you can pick it up after you place it. Yeah, that's a uh, right click to mine built tiles. It's not letting me though. Is it because it's underneath something? That's weird. Yeah, that, that was um, added by AI industry where you can place stone but whatever deal with it some other time we almost need to have a buffer chest for this copper just because it's copper overload but mm, deal with that later. Oh, there's still tons of steerotite to go through. Rip. Well, it's all good for now. This seems like a good place to end the episode. Uh, I think on the next one, we're going to want to expand our little mini bus out here and start producing all of the smaller components so at least when we're handcrafting uh, belts and whatnot they go faster but also eh, maybe you want might want to uh, produce some of these belts too at least the basic ones I can understand why maybe not wanting to do the more complicated ones but yeah we'll, we'll see um, we can't go from this to mega base just like that so we need to basically work our way up from smaller uh, bus systems to larger bus systems. So since we've got the small one, we can do small things with it and make life a little easier. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.